What I want to do in this video is a couple things. Well, one physical thing, and I want to talk about a little bit about the design. But the first thing I need to do is get the threaded rods that hold the bearing blocks that we made earlier on top of this side panel, each side panel. So to lay these out, I've, you know, done a little bit of drawing and sketch up and have developed a plan up to a certain point. And I've determined that these need to be at 21 inches from, I'm going to say the end. If we call this the start, which you would feed the wood in, this will be the end. So 21 inches from this end, I'm going to mark it here. And I know that this is not as precise as probably it could be. Uh, I don't think it really matters that much. The critical thing about a jointer is not the, say, the attitude of the cutter head. If it's off by, you know, a, a tenth of a degree or half a degree, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. The critical thing is the height in relationship to the table. And all of that is adjustable and, and you're able to fine tune that with shims underneath these bearing blocks and whatnot. So. And then when I have the hole started, I'll take that off again. And I've got this block of hardwood here and use this to guide the bit down straight as far as it'll go. And then take this away and finish drilling the hole. Ultimately, I want these holes to be as long as they possibly can be for this drill bit, which is around about three and a half inches deep. Okay, I've got all four of them drilled out. I've got my quarter inch threaded rod here. I need to cut to length. Uh, the length that I need uh, I need four pieces that are three and a half plus two and a half, you could say, and that makes six. <laughs> uh, so four pieces that are six inches long. And what's going to hold these threaded rods in here is polyurethane construction adhesive. I'm going to coat each of the threaded rods on the lower half and make sure I get enough down inside the hole that it you know, oozes up around there and anchors it in there solidly. You can also use epoxy. Or I could also use epoxy. So I used to saying you can. But you're not doing this. I am. So I'm going to use this. Because like I said, I've got trust in this. A lot of faith. I've used this so many times before for situations very much like this. Uh, I never had a failure. Um, not within reason anyway. I'm just going to do some obscene in and out action here like this. The objective is to make sure that the threaded rod is completely coated with this glue. Now what I'll do is I'll get a little bit more squeezed in there so that when I put it in this time and I bottom it out, it's actually pushing the glue back up around this threaded rod. This kind of expands a little bit as it's drying. That's what makes it so perfect for this because it will expand into the fibers of the particle board here and it will expand into the threads of the threaded rod and it'll set up very hard and very solid. So this is almost like it becomes part of the side here. I've moved the operation into my office here where I want to talk a little bit about the design of the jointer. I've got the SketchUp file open on my computer here and this drawing has kind of evolved since I started doing this and I made several changes over the time that I started and uh, it's at the point now where I think it's fairly complete. I can say with confidence that it's uh, something that I can build from. Now the case with all of the things that I designed is that I want to strip it down to the essentials. I want to try to simplify things as much as I possibly can, but still maintain the original functionality that you would find in a jointer like this. So starting off, we have one of the side panels that I already built and you saw in an earlier video, and that's this green thing here. And as you can see in the drawing, the bearing blocks have been installed and the cutter head is in place. And to finish the side panels, I want to mount pieces of hardwood on either side of the bearing blocks. And what they'll do is they'll go up tight to it and actually help hold those in place along with the threaded rods I put in earlier. 
Now moving up to the top of the machine, what I have for the in-feed and the out-feed tables are pieces of 1 8 inch thick steel. And these will be screwed down to a plywood subtable that's directly below them. I've hidden the other side panel so you can have a better look at the guts, you could say. And these brown parts here are what make up the outfeed table. And that's basically the sub table, that's three quarter inch plywood. And then a support on each side that's fastened to that sub table. And then lastly, what I have here is kind of a plywood baffle that closes in the place where the chips will come down. Now moving on to the infeed side of the jointer, I've got these color coded so you'll be able to see it a little bit more clearly. Everything that's in red here, along with the steel top, moves up and down. And the movement that this has to do is very small actually. An eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths of an inch maximum. So I figured the best way to do that was with a 45 degree inclined plane. And that's what you can see it's resting on that blue plywood there. Now moving in closer, we can actually see what makes the table adjust up and down. And it's yet another inclined plane. This is very much like the one that's in my router lift and it's driven by a hand wheel on the side. You rotate the hand wheel and it slides that track back and forth and it moves the in-feed table up and down. As an example here, I've got everything set up so that I can move the in-feed table up and down just to show you how it works. So as you can see, I've made it simple and straightforward to use. I like the idea of having the crank on the side of the jointer like that. And then you reach inside and you just tighten up those two knobs and that'll lock it in position so that it will not move when you're ready to make your cuts. Uh, originally when I thought about doing this project, I said to myself, how often do you actually uh, change the uh, depth of cut on a jointer? And, and originally I was going to use just four bolts underneath there that you would reach in with a wrench and adjust until you lift the table up in position and you can level it up and all that and then just you know set it and forget it type thing but i said to myself while i was doing this people will probably feel kind of ripped off with that so i decided to make it a little bit more functional and you know when you add function you always add complexity but i think that i've kind of hit the balance here or i do believe anyway for you know functionality and complexity <laughs>